After Vietnam, nose art policies were once again tightened up. One of the factors that contributed to this, that is true to this day, is that when aircraft of the Strategic Air Command are transferred between units, they are repainted. So the Strategic Air Command discourages the practice. However, during the early 1980s, a new Strategic Air Command regulation permitted that specific historical units would be allowed to have specific historical nose art. In 1985, the Strategic Air Command permitted nose art for other aircraft, with the provision that the art was tasteful with no nudity. From there, we saw a resurgence of nose art that can actually be traced back to the early 1970s with the US Air Force Project Warrior which was an effort to commemorate aircraft's past history. In the spirit of the project, the 380th and 509th bomb wings began putting nose art on their aircraft. Even though it was against the regulations, the nose art was permitted to stay. When the Gulf War started, nose art was pretty prolific. We saw a number of works that were replicants of World War II art and names. Such as on F-111s, we saw Lucky Strike, and Ready Teddy. I apologize for the quality of these photos, but unfortunately there aren't many pictures of these works, which is a common trend unfortunately for this time period, as there were a number of restrictions imposed onto journalists during the Gulf War. After Vietnam, the Pentagon blamed the loss on the media, who were often quite harsh and critical. Of course, not all Gulf War nose art were replicants, like nose art from World War I, World War II, and the Vietnam War, it often reflected contemporary popular culture. For example, The Simpsons, Batman, and The Incredible Hulk. We saw a lot of nose art on the A-10 Warthog. Many are quite humorous, like holy shit. Here comes the judge. and Chopper Popper. We also saw some patriotic symbols like this eagle holding a Tommy gun, or this free Q8 emblem. There were also a few pinups like Panther Princess and Desert Bell. On the F-16 you can really see just how muted the colours of these artworks were. This was done either in the interest of maintaining camouflage or just trying to maintain a general conservatism. Many of the colourful artworks were either toned down or just painted over during the war period. With the F-14s, we did see some nose art, like this small pinup, but like the Navy F-4s of Vietnam, it was more common to see tail art, like the famous VFA-103 Jolly Rogers with their skull and crossbones or the VFA-41 Black Aces, or my personal favourite, VFA-143 Puke and Dogs, with this incredible abstract Pegasus. There are also many nose artworks on the E2C Hawkeyes, like Misbehaven and Claddy. There was also a number of works on the A6 Intruder, with a few being pinups, like Heartless and Eve of Destruction. And also a few interesting images like Puff the Magic Dragon. We also saw more bomber nose art on the B-52. For example, Express Delivery, Yankee Doodle the Second, Let's Make a Deal, and one of my favourites, Urban Renewal, which has a rather magnificent typeface. Also, a camel victory mark? I would love to know the story behind that one. One nation that had an abundance of nose art was the United Kingdom. The Panavia Tornado was a popular platform that played host to many incredible artworks. For example, pinups like Debbie, Mary Rose, Foxy Killer, and Guinness Girl. There were also a number of non-pinup artworks like Snoopy Airways, Born Fighter, 
and my personal favourite, Buster Gonad and his unfeasibly large testicles. Another popular platform was the Sepacat Jaguar. It also had pinups like Katrina Jane and also funny images like Fat Slags and Sandman. I definitely think the UK had the best artworks of this era. They seemed to have more freedom than the Americans and really expressed themselves with large, bright artworks. During the Gulf War, for the Americans at least, sexually provocative artworks were removed before aircraft were deployed to Saudi Arabia to avoid offending inhabitants of the area. When the public learned about crews copying World War II pinups like Who's Your Hotshot and Little Patches II, there were protests. Time magazine also ran a story in 1988 called Bimbos for Bombers that read, Since July, approximately 30 B-52 bombers assigned to the 8th Air Force in Louisiana have sported 1940s-style snout art. The original creations ranged from feisty cartoon mice to bare-breasted bimbos accompanied by ribald slogans. But in difference to feminist sensibilities, the new versions are much more modest. The article drew negative criticism, and the National Organization of Women and the National Women's History Project voiced their objections to the practice. On the other hand, some US Air Force servicemen, including women, strongly defended the art. I'm not going to say what I believe is the correct course of action, but I do see both sides of the argument. I wanted to find some cool artworks from the Soviet-Afghan war, but it was near impossible to find any. I did find one MI-24 nose artwork of a dragon carrying rocket pods, but that was all I could find. Soviet policy towards nose art was probably very strict, but this is simply a guess as I could not find the actual Soviet regulations. Which is a shame, as Soviet planes were great platforms for artworks, as UK-based cartoonist, illustrator and street artist Flegham demonstrated on this SU-17. Or this MiG-21MF called Bunny Fighter. We did see a number of incredible artworks come out of the Czech Republic, however, like this incredible shark mouth and pinup combination on an SU-25 Frogfoot from 1984, or this humorous frog smashing a tank. This MiG-23 is absolutely stunning. It's called Hellfighter. I love everything about this artwork, the bright red colour, the incredible mouth and eyes at the front of the aircraft, the typeface, and of course, the astonishing tail art. That isn't the only unbelievable Czech MiG-23. Here we see an incredible Tiger design with beautiful stripes all down the aircraft. We will definitely see more Czech planes in the next episode. They truly have some incredible artworks on their aircraft. The Canadians also got into the fun with their own CF-101 voodoos, like this colourful Alouette one, which looks rather like a menacing chicken. The Italians also joined in with their F-104 Starfighters, like La Strega, or this Ferrari-inspired nose art, or this one, or maybe this one. Some of these artworks aren't from the 80s or 90s, but I just wanted to illustrate just how much the Italians love Ferrari. The final aircraft I will talk about is the F-117 Nighthawk, the first operational stealth aircraft. To my surprise, we actually saw some victory marks. This was surprising to me, as I was expecting the military to not allow such markings, as it might interfere with the radar absorbent paint. Some pilots got creative, however, and painted artworks on the inner doors of the landing gear. This radar absorbent paint is something I will talk about in the next episode, and it's part of the reason why we are seeing nose art disappear. Researching this period was actually surprisingly difficult. A lot of the pictures were blurry and low resolution, and trying to find information about nose art regulation was difficult. The University of Arizona actually had some really useful information on the topic, but compared to eras like World War II, information was sparse to say the least. There were some European nations that I really wanted to find some artworks for, but it was tricky as many of the images were undated. I do hope you enjoyed this episode, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.